Hey, this is GoPi and this is another video on Elisp and in this one specifically we'll be going over back quote and why it's so important. Now if you've ever been going through source code or somebody else config you'll probably have seen an expression where it looks like a list but it's doing a lot more than just that and you're just wondering what the heck is going on. That expression might have looked something like this and you're at a first glance you're like what are these weird things doing inside of the list and then when you go ahead and evaluate it you're surprised by the output which in this case is the following so yeah it seems um you're like whoa what the heck's going on so basically we're just going to break it down really simply and fast now the one thing that you need to know is that the first character that this expression begins with is with a back quote not a single quote a single quote looks like this now at a glance you might be deceptive and you might confuse both of them but it's really not <laughs> the back quote is the character that's right next to the, to the number one on american keyboards um i don't know about other keyboards but for the american ones it's pretty much right next the the character right next to the number one on the left side and the single quote well you guys know what a single quote is but yeah, don't get those two confused because um, they will make a difference and you'll see right now. Um, so first things first, um, um, you might be you might be wondering if there's any difference between a back quote and a single quote. Well, let's figure that out. We'll do equals and then we'll have uh, this list that starts with a back quote and we'll do one, two, three. And then for this one, we'll go one, two, three and then we'll check if it's the same and if it's the same well then we'll actually we don't know until we run it right so let's do it right now boom and it is the same so yeah in a nutshell a back quote is the same as a list um as the single quote except it does some little extra things as you just saw and that's what we're going to go over right now so first things first um we are gonna use an example. So, so let's set numbers to uh, one, two, three, and notice that I'm using the single quote. So this is a normal list, numbers. If I just put it out, numbers, nothing fancy right there. <coughs> so if I start with um, a back quote, and I do one, one, two, three, oops, uh, numbers, actually, let me just start with the list first. One, two, three numbers. Well, I should just see that exact same thing spit out, right? Boom. So let's trade it up for um, a back quote. It's the same thing. Well, if, yeah, it's obviously going to be the same thing because we're not doing anything special. We just replaced a single quote with a back quote and it just reads it out the same. So when we use the back quote, we have to use something special to tell it, hey, I want you to do not the normal thing, but something extra. So, but, and we require the back quote for that. So if we want to print out the numbers, um, the list, I mean, we just put a comma inside and we're saying hey whatever evaluate whatever the heck I'm showing you right here whatever the next thing is so if I go ahead and run it again look at that it printed out the list one two one two three and then the list again but if we switch that with a single quote we just get this exactly the exact same thing so nothing fancy so remember you got to use the back quote all right let's go back and um, Let's see. Um, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> part one of this. So we're almost done already because there's only like three parts. So the next one is how to evaluate things inside of it. So we do back uh, the back quote one. Uh, actually, uh, one plus yeah, let's do this. One plus two is what is what would be one plus two? Well, it would be one plus two, right? Is that? And normally, if we have a single quote, well, then this doesn't really do anything. It just prints, spits it out. But if we change it to back quote, what do you guys think it will do? Well, the exact same thing, because we didn't change anything. Remember, we've got to do something special. So we say, hey, um, whatever the next thing is, evaluate it. You know, we use the comma. And then um, Emacs knows exactly what to do. So now we press it. And now it's 1 plus 2 is 3, which is beautiful. So this is how you do um, evaluate things inside a list. So you just put the comma and then you put the expression and you know, it does its magic. It's, it's, that's as simple as it gets. Now the final thing, the third part is um, it's called splicing. So splicing is basically means is grab whatever, you know, this, um, this iterator, it can be like a list or a vector or whatever, and just inject it into the current uh, list that I'm doing the operation in. So you know enough talking let me just show you code this is how it looks this is how it will look like 
Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's count uh, one, two, three, and then um, we'll do the splice operator, which is a comma, and that sign, and then whatever we want to splice numbers. So if we're if from what I just said, we're going to be injecting the values from whatever the expression is, um, what would this be? Let's count one, two, three, and then since we're injecting it numbers, and numbers is equal to a list of one, two, three, it should say, let's count one, two, three, one, two, three. And we do it again, and there you go. Let's count one, two, three. So now, with basically those two things that you just learned, if we re revisit the original expression at first, this all makes sense now. We do a back quote, we say one plus two is a comma, and then we say, you know, do your thing magic um, with this expression, with this function call, and now the rest, and we're gonna go, it's gonna print out n rest r, and then we're gonna splice this. And it makes absolutely sense now, if we run it, say one plus two is three, and rest are four, five, six. So you see, it's as simple as that. Um, one thing that you might be asking is, why not just use back quotes all the time instead of single quotes? Where, well, that thing is probably a more of a security thing. You don't want to just randomly evaluate things that are injected into a list, even if it is controlled solely by you. It's kind of a bad practice, bad um, habit to be doing. So just use back quotes whenever you know you need to evaluate something. Otherwise, just default to using a single quote. Um, no need to, you know, try to go fancy or anything. Um, and remember, if you ever forget what the back quote is, you just do um, the simple control HF, insert the back quote, and then um, you see there's an entry for that and press enter, and you get this already. And even this is more concise. Docs are always beautiful, and it just tells you everything right there. Basically, those four lines are exactly what this video is about, and even it's more concise and to the point, which is beautiful because beautiful is always nice. <laughs> yeah, um, let's see. This will probably be the last episode related to Elisp. So if there's anything else that you guys want me to go over in the realm of Emacs, I'll probably, you know, I'll think about it. Um, I'm thinking of doing org mode um, next, at least from starting to finish. Pretty much um, like, uh, um, yeah, pretty much just going, going over the basics of org mode I'm thinking of doing like the documentation of the built-in uh, org mode in video series. That way um, um, we just have it, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. But yeah, that's about it. All right, thanks.